In this problem, we're going to find the area bounded by these two graphs. Let's go through this problem very, very carefully. So I think the hardest thing about this problem is actually graphing these two functions um, correctly. So if you have a calculator, you should definitely use it uh, to its maximum potential. You can use it to graph as much as you are able to. But we're going to do it all by hand. So first notice that this is the cube root of x minus 7. So if you just had the cube root of x, the cube root function looks something like this. That's the rough shape of the cube root function. And when you subtract 7 from the x-coordinate, what happens is it translates it over to 7, so it does something like this. So this is the graph of f of x. This is a rough picture of the graph of f of x. g of x equals x minus 7 is a line. So it's a line with a positive slope. And it's also going to pass through 7, because if you plug in 7, you get 0. And it looks something like this. Okay, and this is negative 7. So this is the graph of g of x. How am I doing this? Just from memory, I guess. If you plug in 7, you get 0. If you plug in 0, you get negative 7. Okay, we're going to do better than this, though. We're going to give a better graph. But this is just so you have this in the back of your mind. So one of the first things you should always do in these problems is you should attempt to find any points of intersection. So let's go ahead and set them both equal to each other to see if we can find any points of intersection. So we have the cube root of x minus 7, and that's equal to x minus 7, like that. And now we have to solve for x. So what we can do is we can cube both sides. So cubing this and cubing this. That'll give us x minus 7. Then over here we're going to have uh, x minus 7 cubed. I'd say, wow, I guess we could multiply x minus 7 cubed out. Um, I'm going to try to avoid that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to subtract this piece over. So I'm going to write it like this. x minus 7 cubed minus, and then parentheses, x minus 7, and that's equal to, to 0. So basically, I took this whole piece and just subtracted it over to the other side and wrote it like this. And the reason I did that is because now I'm hoping we can just factor out uh, an x minus 7. Let's try it. So x minus 7, parentheses, and this will be x minus 7 quantity squared, right? Because x minus 7 to the 1 times x minus 7 to the 2 is x minus 7 to the 3 because you add the exponents. And then this is minus 1. Pretty hardcore. And this is equal to 0. Interesting problem. I have not done this problem. Usually I, I just work out the problems on the spot. So I'm kind of shocked by uh, this little maneuver here. Kind of interesting. This is x minus 7. You can multiply this out. There's a formula. You square the first one, so x squared. You multiply these two and double them. So 7x times 2 is 14x. And then you square the last one, so plus 49. And then we still have the minus 1, and that's equal to 0. So that's a formula from, from math. If you, have, if you have a minus b quantity squared, you square the first one, minus, and then 2ab, and then square the last one. That's what we used here. All right, I guess we can subtract the 49 and the 1. That's a good next step. So this will be x squared minus uh, 14x plus uh, 48 and that's equal to 0. I think this should factor. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, so we'll work on it. Let's see. So I'm going to write it like this with the hopes that we can actually factor it. So we need two numbers that multiply to 48 and add to negative 14. Huh. Well, what multiplies to uh, 48? Uh, 12 times 4? Yeah, 12 times 4 is 48. That works. And uh, if they're, um, yeah, 12 times 4 is, let me just double check that. 12 times 4 is 48. I'm not losing my, my sanity here. It's going to be 48. But those don't add up to negative um, to 14, so that's not going to work. We can't use uh, 12 times 4. So we have to use something else. How about 6 times 8? 6 times 8 is also 48. Let's try that. 
Yep, that'll work because if you add those up, you get negative 14. A little bit sneaky. So this is x minus 6, x minus 8. And that's equal to 0. So you see, um, sometimes your first attempt isn't the best one. So I tried 12 and 4, and I was pretty sure it would work. So I'm like, okay, 12 times 4 is 48. Then I realized, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you can't add 12 and 4 to get negative 14. That's impossible. So you say, okay, there's got to be something else. You know, 24 and 2, no. But 6 times 8 is 48, and they add to negative 14. So we have three possible points here of intersection, um, 7, 6 and 8. So now we can attempt to uh, draw the graph correctly. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down the functions again so we have them. So f of x was equal to the cube root of x minus 7 and g of x is equal to, um, we said x, x minus 7. Okay. So let's go ahead and attempt to give a decent graph. So here's the y axis. And then here's the x-axis. So this is x, and this is y. And we know we have some intersection points. A 7, we know, is really important. We talked about the cube root function passing through there, as well as g. They both cross there. And then we have, so I'll put a 7 here, and then I'll call this 6, and I'll call this 8. So what happens if you plug in 6 into both of these functions? Well, if you plug it into this, you get negative 1. Likewise, here you'll also get negative 1. So um, this is not really drawn to scale, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the negative 1 here. It's not drawn to scale. And uh, the other place where they intersect is when you plug in 8. That gives you 1. And again, not drawn to scale. So if you, if you were to use a calculator for this, your, your calculator would look pretty bad. You'd have to like do some major manipulation here um, to get it to work. So I'm going to go ahead and draw G in yellow. So let's use yellow for G. So this will be G right here, this line. Okay, and then this one here, like this, this is going to be RF. And I'll use a different color, I guess, since we're using colors. So let's do let's do blue for for this one. So we're doing blue for for F. How did I know it looked like that? Just from memory. Remember the cube root function looks something like that. So we just took it over to seven. And so that gave us that. Pretty cool, you know, that we're able to do it uh, without a calculator. Again, if you have a calculator, you should totally use it. So this is going to be two different integrals, right? Because when we draw a rectangle, we draw a vertical rectangle because we have functions of x, it's top minus bottom. But here, the top function is f, right? It's the blue function. Here, the top function is g. It's the yellow function. So we'd have to integrate twice. I'm thinking that's a bad idea thinking what we can do is this is this is supposed to be symmetric right this picture so this area should be the same as this one so what we can do is we can find this one and then multiply the answer by 2 so let's do that the area is going to be 2 times the integral and so we're just doing this one so we're going from 0 to 8 from 7 to 8 7 to 8 and it's top minus bottom so the top function is the blue one so it'll be the cube root of x minus 7 minus the bottom function, so x minus 7 dx. So this is the integral that will give us the area of both shaded regions. Again, we're just finding the area of the top one and multiplying by 2, just exploiting symmetry. Okay, um, this integral here, I really want to just do it in my head, and I think I will. So first let me rewrite this as 2, 7, 8, and then watch this. This is x minus 7 to the 1 third minus x plus 7. So we're going to be a little bit abusive here. So watch this. So to integrate this thing, like if you wanted to show the work, it would be a real, it would be a lot of work, like a real amount of work. You'd have to let u equal x minus 7, du dx, pretty easy. But then you have to change the limits. So notice that du is dx. So nothing is lost by being extremely abusive here and just using the power rule. So we're going to do just that. So we add 1 to the exponent. So we have x minus 7, 1 third plus 1. So 1 third plus 1 is 1 third plus 3 thirds, which is 4 thirds. And then when you divide by 4 thirds, you really multiply by 3 fourths. And again, this is extremely abusive, but it's kind of okay. And in fact, it is okay 
because nothing is lost. If it was like u equals 2x minus 7, this would be a bad idea because then du is 2dx, and we would have to make sure to divide by 1 half to make everything work. So it's only nice and pretty because uh, x minus 7, its derivative is just 1. Here, we can use the power rule, so minus x squared over 2. And then 7 just integrates to 7x, and we're going from 7 to 8. All right, just do it. This is equal to 2. I'm going to leave the 2 outside. So first, we plug in the 8 for the x. Uh, I'm going to skip some steps here um, because it's getting messy. So 8 minus 7 is 1, so it's going to be 3 fourths. And then it's, w it's 1 to the 4 thirds, which is just 1. Okay, because it's 1 to the 4 thirds, which is 1. Plugging in 8 here, you get minus 64 over 2. 8 squared is 64, plus 7 times 8, which is, which is 56. So skipping some steps. Again, 8 minus 7 is 1. 1 to the 4 thirds is 1. 8 squared is 64. 7 times 8 is 56. Looks good. Minus parentheses. Oh, this is pretty awesome. 7 minus 7 is 0, so 3 fourths times 0 is 0. Because when you put a 7 here, you just get 7 minus 7. That's awesome. Minus 49 halves, because 7 squared is 49, plus 7 times 7, which is 49. Okay, all right. Let's keep going. So this is equal to, we still have the 2. Um, let's see, what, what can we do here? We have 3 fourths. 64 over 2 is minus 32, and then plus uh, 56. Trying to be really careful. Wow, this video is 11 minutes. Ridiculous. Congratulations if you are still watching. <laughs> so did not know this problem would take this long. Uh, 49 halves plus 49. These area problems are brutal. Uh, so this is equal to 2. So we can do some math here. I'm going to cheat and use my calculator just to do all the addition, just to make sure I don't mess up. I'm adding up all the whole numbers here. That gives me 69. So we have 3 fourths. Combining this and this and this gives us uh, 69. So plus 69 plus uh, 49 halves. OK. So far, uh, so good. Oh, I made a little mistake here. I made a little mistake here. I caught a mistake. So right here, right here, this needs to be a negative. So I'm glad I caught it so I can save this video. <laughs> so that needs to be a negative. See, I put a plus. This is 2. Let's fix that. So let me add up the numbers again in my calculator. Negative 32 plus 56 minus 49 is negative 25. So we have 3 fourths. Okay. I'm going to write this one also. Plus 49 halves. Okay. And then this, this, and this, you combine these and that gives you negative 25. Good save. I'm going to distribute the 2. So 3 fourths times 2 is 3 halves. Uh, and then 2 times 49 halves is 49. And then 2 times negative 25 is negative 50. I am shocked and surprised I caught that mistake. So then we have 3 halves. Then 49 minus 1 is minus 1. So we get 3 halves minus 2 halves, which is 1 halves. And that is the final answer. So little mistakes can ruin all of the fun. Uh, but the good news is if, you know, if you're doing this for like a class or something, um, you know, usually if you make a mistake like this, it's like, you know, very forgivable. It's, very, it's a very minor mistake in the grand scheme of things. Really, the hardest part of this problem, the part that most people care about, um, so we should change this to a smiley face. <laughs> the part that most people care about is the, um, it's this, it's, it's the setup, right? This is, this is what it's all about right here, this. It's, it's this, and, and it's this. You know, I mean, if you, if you make it this far, if you get down here and, you know, you plug it into your calculator, you know, usually most people are, uh, are okay with that. I hope this video uh, has been beneficial. 14 minutes for an area problem. Wow. Good stuff. Take care.